All right, today we're gonna to take a look at Manjaro. It's based on Arch Linux, so it essentially makes Arch Linux more accessible to even the most novice of Linux users. And this is great, considering that the Arch Linux repository contains more packages than most other Linux distros. So in theory, Manjaro would have access to all of those packages as well. So to get started with Manjaro, you want to download the ISO from manjaro.org forward slash downloads. And here we'll find a few different flavors of Manjaro. The difference, of course, being desktop environments. We can choose from XFCE, KDE Plasma, or GNOME. And there's also an architect edition where you can set up and configure Manjaro in every single detail using the CLI. Although at that point, it sounds like you might as well just go ahead and install Arch Linux. I mean, you'd get more bragging rights for doing that anyway. So I'm gonna download the XFCE edition since I'm running Mint XFCE right now. I've been very pleased with this desktop environment recently. It's minimal, polished, and it just kind of works. So once you've downloaded your ISO, come on over to VirtualBox and start setting up your VM. I'm going to name mine Manjaro and make sure that you change the version of your Linux to Arch Linux 64-bit because of course it's based off of Arch Linux and hit next I'm going to change my memory to 4 gigs of RAM but Manjaro should run fine on 2 gigs and maybe even 1 gig but 1 gig would be pushing it a little a little bit too low I'd recommend using at least 2 and create a virtual hard disk now, VDI. And I'm gonna do a fixed size because that's a little bit faster, but just keep in mind that when you do a fixed size, you can't change the size of your disk later. And I'm gonna set it to 22 gigs of um, storage space, create. And we're gonna go into the settings. And first thing we're gonna do is we're going to actually want to change our display to our um, graphics controller to VBox VGA. Now it's gonna tell us that this is an invalid setting, but it's actually the best setting to use for Manjaro because it's going to allow us to have full screen uh, inside of the installer and it's going to allow us to easily get full screen post install because it can be a little bit difficult uh, even doing that if you're using the default VMS VGA setting. So change that. I'm gonna also go here and set two processors and of course set um, my ISO into the virtual CD drive. We wanna do Manjaro. And let's see, is there any other settings that I'm missing? Oh yeah, let's also change the hard disk to be first so that after the install, it's gonna automatically boot from the right disk. Okay, let's go ahead and get Manjaro started. I'm gonna go ahead and do full screen since it's going to change that way once we boot anyway. Then of course we get this very familiar Linux start screen. All right, and then as you can see right away, uh, even inside of the installation CD, we still get to have a full screen. So that's really cool. You want to double click this one here to start installing Manjaro. And you can see it's just, it's really nice polished, but under the hood, like if we were to open up a terminal here, it should say, uh, no, we don't have the Pac-Man core yet, but this is basically Arch Linux that you're running, just with all of the heavy lifting done for you. All right, so yeah, we're gonna do that time zone, and of course, English keyboard, want to erase the disk, and I'm not gonna do any swap, this is a virtual machine anyway. I'm probably not gonna do too, too much with it, although I am thinking about switching my main system to 
Manjaro just as a little bit of an experiment since I'm already using um, Mint XFCE as my main distro right now. I don't think it would be too much of a change for me. Um, and then they have this other thing too. So this is how you know that it's it's meant for more uh, novice users. Um, this is actually a bit of misinformation where it says use the same password for the administrator account. They should change this to root. You know, I, I get that they're trying to make this friendly for probably people coming from Windows or whatever, but we don't do administrators in Linux. We only do root. And yeah, I will use the same password for root. So here you get to select your office suite. Now, it used to be that Manjaro only gave you uh, free office as the option. So free office, uh, if you haven't heard of it before, it's similar to LibreOffice. Well, actually, it's more similar to Microsoft Office because it's basically a like fingerprint clone of Microsoft Office, although obviously it doesn't have all that cloud crap that the latest versions of Office have. but it looks and feels and functions just like Word, Excel, Publisher, etc. cetera. Um, but this is not free software. It does have non-free blobs inside of it. So, you know, if you're one of those uh, Richard Stallman types that only wants to use strictly free software, don't use free office, all right? Use LibreOffice instead, which now they give you an option to choose from. So Manjaro has been forgiven for that. And I'm gonna hit install. Yeah, this is just an overview of all the settings. So I'm gonna hit install, install now. And I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video while this install is running because it's gonna take a couple of minutes. All right, so Manjaro has finished installing. That's actually been one of the faster installations that I've experienced in VirtualBox. So I'm going to restart now. And it should automatically boot from the uh, hard disk since we made that the first boot priority. Let's see, you're not seeing anything so far. Ah, here we go. Let's go ahead and log in. And here we go. So you get this nice little welcome message. And of course, the first notification that you're going to get is probably from your package manager telling you that you have a bunch of updates. We can look at this for more details. This is, of course, because, um, like I said, Manjaro is based on Arch Linux, and Arch Linux pushes out updates to packages. It keeps everything really bleeding edge, so don't be surprised if there's package updates. Uh, you can go ahead and do the full upgrade to your system right here, or if you want to be a cool kid, because, of course, this is Arch Linux based, so we want to act like cool kids, right? We can do sudo pacman syu. And this will effectively do the same thing. So I'm just going to do it the cool kid way. And let's see, while that's running, let's take a look around the system a little bit. So it's based off of XFCE, really nice um, desktop environment. And I like how they riced it for Manjaro here. We got Thunar as our file manager. Some really nice minimalist icons, everything like that here. There's a lot of software that it comes with too. Let's see, so we got Firefox, we got GIMP. That's really useful, I don't have to include that. That's one of the things that I've been a little bit annoyed about the recent versions of Mint is that they don't include GIMP anymore, which is probably one of my most used programs besides VirtualBox and uh, Firefox. So I wonder what text editor they've got on here. Um, they don't have gedit. What do they have? What do they have? LibreOffice Writer. Mousepad. Have I used Mousepad? Oh yeah, I guess this is like the default XFCE editor. I thought it was Zed though. 
Does it have Z now? No, it doesn't have Z. Okay, I don't know about this mouse pad text editor. I don't think I've ever used it before. Um, it appears to have pretty much all the same settings. Um, it's got indent options. I don't remember whether or not it had that in a uh, G edit. Uh, show line numbers. Okay, sure. So it's got pretty much all the same things. Uh, color scheme, cobalt. Okay. Yeah. So this is basically just another, uh, G edit clone or Z clone. I, I forget which one actually came first in that whole bunch. Still updating packages. Yeah. I had about a gig worth of packages that I had to update. Um, let's also do a, um, let's just spawn a new tab here, I guess. And let's run an HTOP to see how we're running. So yeah, of course we're gonna be using a lot of CPU, a little bit of spikage there since we're updating packages. But even while we're updating, we're still at under one gig of RAM usage. So this definitely is not a bloated distribution. It uses its resources effectively. And let's see, is this finished yet? No, it's still going, okay. I wanna see how much it uses when it's actually at idle. So let's get Firefox going too. This is kinda of like a regular user use case type scenario. And then we'll see how much RAM we're using. I bet you that we're still gonna be using less than Windows at idle. And we are. So even with a web browser open, we're still at under two gigs of RAM, which last time I've booted into Windows 10, that's, that's what it uses at idle with all of its default, um, with all its default GUI settings. Like the only way you get it below two gigs is you basically have to screw around with the settings and make it look um, just really cruddy, you know, you have to make it, you have to make it look like some weird monstrosity baby that Windows 10 had with like Windows 98. It's terrible. All right, let's see if, uh, my packages, oh yeah, this isn't a real terminal. This is just a drop down terminal. So control alt T by the way, will spawn um, not an actual terminal process. I mean, it is a terminal process, but it's not a terminal that you can alt tab to or that you can really easily manipulate. Like you see, as soon as I click off of it, it goes away. So that's uh, probably the only thing I would change with this setup so far. I'm liking it, but I prefer control alt T to launch a real terminal. I don't know, maybe a Manjaro dev will watch this and actually set it up that way. All right, so when we are completely at idle, I'm not really gonna count this um, this text editor here. Well, I guess I'll close it, even though it won't make much of a difference. So we're using 706 megs of RAM at idle. So even if you have an older machine that doesn't have a crap load of RAM like these new machines do, You'll be good off with Manjaro. I give this one an A plus for Linux distro. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. Uh, any questions that you have with Manjaro or any of your experiences with Manjaro, go ahead and leave it as a comment down below. Peace.